Governor G. Randell is serving a second term as Pennsylvania's 45th governor, overseeing a $28.3 billion budget in the nation's sixth most populous state. His strategic investments have energized Pennsylvania's economy, created jobs, and revitalized communities. Notably, Governor Randell is working to create jobs in the emerging, emerging alternative energy economy and develop strategies to reduce dependence on foreign oil. As the 121st mayor of the city of Philadelphia, Governor Rendell eliminated a $250 million deficit, balancing the city's budget and generating five consecutive budget surpluses. Indeed, the New York Times called the Philadelphia Renaissance under Rendell the most stunning turnaround in recent urban history. To start, Governor, what in your background or your experience has made you a champion of infrastructure? Well, it really started during my time as mayor. Um, I remember that uh, there was a, a year, and I don't remember which, during my tenure as mayor, where we had about 40 straight days of sub-freezing weather. And then on the 41st day, it zoomed up to 65 degrees, and in the 42nd degree, instead day, it was about 70 degrees. And as a result of that rapid change in temperature, uh, pipes burst all over the city. We had about 110 different ruptures of our water lines. And I was talking to our street department people, I said, how could this happen? He said, well, Mary, you've got to understand, most of the water pipes in Philadelphia were laid in the uh, uh, 19th century, and they're about a foot below the surface, so they freeze, and when it warms up quickly, they crack and break, just like concrete does. And I thought, my gosh, pipes laid 100 years ago? And I knew the state of the city's roads and its bridges, so I decided then that we had to do something, and clearly the city and the states alone don't have the money to do something about this, and I believe the federal government had to step up. So I agreed to accept the chairmanship of an organization that was called Rebuild America, mostly private sector people, like contractors, constructors, uh, architects, engineers, lawn lawyers, who had a vested interest in seeing infrastructure developed in this country. Uh, but I became the chair and I fought hard for I I infrastructure. And interestingly, when President Clinton became president, he had a uh, commission on whether there should be a federal capital budget, which was our idea, Rebuild America, as the only way to deal with infrastructure. I testified before it. The commission actually took testimony, made no recommendation to the president, and of course there wasn't a capital budget. Now fast forward another 10, 12 years, Washington has no idea how they're going to even fund our transportation infrastructure needs. Uh, Chairman Oberstar has a bill in for uh, half a trillion dollars of funding over six years, but with the gas tax uh, uh, revenues declining so rapidly, has no idea of how to fund it. And we believe, and by the way, that's just transportation. There's our water systems, our wastewater systems, so many different things make up the American infrastructure. So we're suggesting again that there has to be a federal capital budget. We have to go offline. You cannot pay for infrastructure repairs and revitalization the way you pay for buying paper clips. That's what the federal government does. They buy paper clips and that money comes out of the operating budget. Paper clips have a 30-day uh, lifespan. They fix a bridge which has a 40-year lifespan and they pay for it the same way out of the operating budget. We will never do the American things we need to do to fix up the American infrastructure. The American Society of Civil Engineers say we have over a $2.2 trillion infrastructure gap. We're never going to do that unless we go offline, out of the operating budget, and find a new way, like a capital budget, to fund it. So that's one of the components of the recommendations that Building America's Future has made to the Congress and the President. So it's sort of come full circle to when I first started out as mayor, being interested in infrastructure. So absolutely, the Building America's Future Coalition seems vital to our nation sort of embodying a full-on unified vision of where infrastructure is going. Why do you think that you know, it was so important to you to found this coalition with um, Governor Schwarzenegger? Well, Rebuild America went out of business. Mm -hmm. And there hasn't been any organization with any sort of cloud at all dedicated to infrastructure. Uh, I asked Governor Schwarzenegger and Mayor Bloomberg to join me because both of them had done significant things in their own venues, California and New York City, to put their money where their mouth is into infrastructure spending, same as we've done here in Pennsylvania. Uh, and it works out nice politically. We have a Republican, a Democrat, and an Independent. And so it's the epitome of bipartisanship. And we wanted to focus this year the American attention on infrastructure 
because Ice-T, the transportation bill, will be reauthorized either this fall or maybe next spring, and that's the opportunity. If we let Ice-T get reauthorized with the same old, same old, the same relatively small amount of money, the same earmarks dominating it, earmarks that are not subject to any cost-benefit analysis, we will have blown, I think, the opportunity that comes along once in a generation to really do something about our infrastructure. And infrastructure is all about economic competitiveness, it's about quality of life, and it's about public safety. And you saw what happened with bridge collapse in Minnesota. Uh, we've seen other examples of our crumbling infrastructure, the levees that broke in Cedar Rapids, almost destroying the city. So we, we've got to get busy, and that's our message. And, and we've met with the president, uh, we've met with congressional leaders, we continue to try to apply pressure to get this right, and we'll see what happens. Could you elucidate why you believe infrastructure is so critical to global competitiveness? Well, sure. Um, goods movement is crucial in, in, in the modern economy. Uh, we compete globally. We don't compete. It used to be Pennsylvania competed against New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Ohio, West Virginia. Now we compete against Singapore and, 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 and Korea and India and China and Pakistan and, and France and Germany and uh, so that, and so much of what the bottom line is to a business, business is what your transportation costs are and transportation costs are driven by how quickly and efficiently you can move goods. I'll give you an example. When, when we launched Building America's Future, each and every one of the three of us were allowed to have one prop. And the prop I chose was a map of the U.S. and a map of China. And on the map, we had ten uh, pins. And those ten pins represented the ten largest ports in the U.S. and China. The ten largest ports in China have a throughput, meaning they can move goods through, of 3.5 times, three and a half times greater than the 10 largest ports in, in the U.S. Only the port of New York and the port of uh, Long, uh, Long Beach, L.A. would even make the top 10 in China. And we can't compete if we don't improve the American infrastructure. And ports, again, are an important component of our infrastructure.